Long ago, long or long a time, when we were in was schooling, and the, the mission bought the hotel, made it a secondary school for we, we short of students. But there were a lot of facilities like refrigerators in that school, and the way we use it, we didn't have much use of it except making something to eat, that is ice cream. And the, by using it, then it became a hobby for the students, following and what and what, chasing each other to get the containers to use. But some time ago, I remember it happened that we were fighting over the containers for making ice cream. And the one theory we were told for hygiene in school that everything you eat, you must buy it. And we are buying milk to make the ice cream, we have to boil it for safety. So when boiling, before you put it into the container and into the refrigerator, everyone is rushing to get the container. Some people say that it's not safe to boil milk. What about the cows? They don't boil the milk. Are they dying? No. Mm -hmm. So even me, I don't have to boil it. Some of them put them fresh into the refrigerator cooling chamber. But while I was boiling mine, someone came and saw a vacant container and he grabbed it and put milk into it full. And they told him, but you see me boiling my milk to use that container. Why are you snatching it and use it? We all want to follow. But he, he said, I will have to use it and they don't have to boil mine. But bad luck, while we are parrying, another student came and he took his with the already made ice in the refrigerator. Then he took that container, which was fresh, and I put mine there. But bad luck, we put also the containers into one freezing chamber. So when he came in the evening, mine were really frozen and solid and hard like concrete. But his were also frozen, but in the center they were a bit liquid. She said, no, you changed it, because yours was hot milk and mine was cold milk. So how come the hot milk can freeze much better than cold milk? I told him I didn't change. He said, no, you changed it. We quarreled with that one till we went to the teacher, and the teacher said, open and let I think. Remember where I was wrong? Hot milk cannot freeze nicely, but much better than the milk at room temperature, I mean NTP. So I was the loser, I kept it quiet. But I told some students, let us do it. The next day I bought, bought two bottles of milk. One I boiled, one I didn't boil. And if that one I didn't boil, also showed miserable results. It also didn't freeze much faster and harder and good then the one boiled. So I told him, see what happened yesterday. This is what we did. But they said they changed. No, what? You saw it on your own eyes. People agree that in Pemba, it is supposed to be wrong, but truly it is right. But since the teacher said that you are wrong, you are remaining wrong. Then we left it. it. And in my second school level, they have finished, I passed it. I went to high school. At high school, there was somebody called Dennis Osborne who was coming to talk to students who are going to university. He is in charge of his department in the university. And then at that time when he came, I thought he was writing to ask this man. He is an authoritarian in physics. Then those my teachers at the secondary school level. Then when he asked him, he really replied to me very Next he said, have you done it? I told him, yes. He said, well, I don't have to give you the answer now. But uh, what I do to say to you that I promise you, I will go and repeat it doing in Dar es Salaam, and then I can give you the right answer. Okay, let me come in there a bit. Now, first of all, what you said was that you were going to school, you and your friends used to make ice cream in the school refrigerator, you put your mixture in one day hot, because they were all rushing to get their unboiled mixtures in, and you didn't have a chance. 
So you put your mixture in when it boiled, it didn't cool down. You put, they put their mixtures in cold. Yours froze first. Yours froze first. So, you were puzzled. Yes. And you argued with them, and you went to the teacher, and the teacher said, Teacher said that you who put hot milk should have your milk not to become nice forming ice. Then the ones that were putting the cold and milk into the Now, for a time you believed it. But then you found friends of yours in Tanga who were cooks who made ice cream and they said, oh, we always put in the hot mixture, it freezes quicker that way, didn't they? Yes, they, no, they knew it that way because they also follow the hygiene of boiling. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And they, then they said, but not only following that hygiene, but if you boil it, it becomes ice. Faster. Okay, but then you went, well even I think before, you went to another school, you asked again the same question of the teacher, yes. and he said, You said I was wrong. Hot milk cannot freeze faster than cold milk, and much better than cold You told me, he said you were confused. Yes, he said to me that, boy, you didn't understand your Newton's law of cooling. That's right. And, and then, then my colleagues laughed at me, and every time I do a mistake, they said, this is in Pembers physics. In Pembers physics, and Pembers mathematics, and Pembers yes, science. Yes, everything. Everything you got wrong was or different into me. Poor boy. Yeah. And then, you found a laboratory open. Yep. And you went in, and you told me you took two beakers of water. Yeah. Secretly. Secretly? Yes. You put them in the freezer, yeah. one hot, one cold, which froze first? Hot. The hot. Mm. So, you again asked your teacher. And yes. You still said you were confused. Yes. And then I think that was the time when I visited your school. Yes. I spoke about the importance of science and of science teaching for the country's development. Yes. Tanzania's development, very important indeed at that time, and important still in society that people should know science, and even people who are not scientists should understand it better, and needs to be taught well. And having spoken about that, you said, as I remember now, if I take two beakers of water, yeah. put them in the fridge, freezer, yeah. the one that starts hot freezes first. Why? What did I do next? Do you remember? Yes. I remember you were very politely and you said, you asked me, did I do that experiment? I told you yes, but then you said, at the moment you don't have the answer. Okay, but when but you... I'll give you the answer when I went down. Well, yes, I said all that, but before that, you wrote down, when you wrote this before, that actually you said, uh, I then repeated, asked you to repeat the question. Why do you think I did that? I needed more time to think. This couldn't be true. It was nonsense, I thought. <laughs> but I don't want to hurt this poor man. What will I do? So I said, I would look into it. I would treat you fairly as an equal and being honest. And I didn't really expect it to work. But I knew that actually in the real world, even simple things are sometimes more complicated than we expect. And so I went back to Dar es Salaam. And on the way back, with Ray D'Souza, our technician who was with me, we talked about it, and I remember saying to you, Ray, that it couldn't be, it was nonsense. He must be wrong, because the one that starts hot has to go through the lower temperature, and from starting from then to getting frozen, it'll be the same time as the one that starts there. So it must take longer in total to get down to zero, that is correct, uh, but there's, there's one incident that I recall that I think is important, uh, was that when, when uh, Pemba asked the question of you, there was almost a riot in the class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, is, that, that was disappointing to see that other classmates just simply 
would not accept this question, and neither was the teacher. The teacher was very uncomfortable that a professor from a university was asked the question, and this was somehow an attempt by Pemba to embarrass the professor. Uh, but then Professor Osborne uh, very calmly asked Pemba to ask him the question again, and then things became civil, and the question was asked. But, but I was also very doubtful of the observation on my way back uh, to, to Dar es Salaam. It was a two-day journey back, so we had lots of time to think and talk about it. But Professor Osborne then asked me, uh, as soon as I got back, uh, to do the experiment. Uh, initially, the experiment was done in very simple terms. Uh, I just took two ice trays, which was the only containers that could fit in the freezer compartment of a very small kitchen refrigerator. And I simply took hot water and I took room temperature water and put them in. And yes, Mpemba's observation was correct. Mm -hmm. We then did a further series of experiments the following summer with uh, a, a larger group of technicians and, 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 and our senior science students uh, and with, with, their, with Mpemba in, the, in, in, in our midst. Mm -hmm. And we repeated the experiment several times. Uh, using controls, using proper equipment, using measuring uh, thermistors, etc., conducted the experiments. And that was observation. Now, these experiments were made on beakers of water, because that's the question that Pember had asked me. Beakers of water in a fridge. And we tried them out, and we had thermocouples top and bottom, so that we found a temperature gradient. We concluded that probably um, convection in the water gave it a hot top, and that persisted even when it was down at the average temperature of the cooler starter, and it continued to lose heat from the top surface much more rapidly. We did other independent experiments that supported this, but then, only then, after that actually, did Impembo write down how he had found this out, making ice cream. And now, Impembo and I think that when he made the ice cream, there may have been a different effect, that the metal ice tray melted the frost and ice in the freezer compartment, made better thermal contact, and the heat was lost from underneath. So I think, remember, you found two effects. With ice trays, more heat gets lost more quickly from underneath, but with beakers of water, more heat gets lost more quickly from the top surface. And then we did, the, we did the experiment both with beakers, uh, and it was difficult to get two uniform 100 mil beakers, so we <laughs> went to the chemistry department and, and, and took some from <laughs> them. But then in addition, we also put in a very thin layer of styrofoam insulation. Uh, yes. you know, that was they were on an insulator. Yes, yeah. and it was not easy to get thin styrofoam sheets because that reduced the volume mm -hmm. of the ice compartment, so we had to cut sheets of styrofoam from large packing boxes. But also, when I told you to do this experiment, apparently I annoyed uh, our chief technician, who was a brilliant man, Norman Gardner, and uh, he was uh, quite cross with Ray for having to conduct this experiment because we were doing other work on how best to store science equipment in a tropical climate, and he didn't want interruptions and delays on that. But I said, this must have priority. And, well, we then published this with Pemba's account of the initial discovery first, and our story of the water cooling down to zero second, and after publication. A terrific flood of interest, letters in New Scientist and everything else, uh, went on for years and kept recurring and recurring, until just recently, the Hermes project students found it on the web, decided it was a good thing to run with as an experiment for um, research students to look at, and a good challenge for them at a conference that they had in London recently at the Olympic period, the Cultural Olympiad, as they called it. And then, um, after that, the Royal Society took up this competition to see what more entries could come in. Looking at them, I have learned that we looked at only a tiny part of the problem initially, the cooling from starting temperature down to zero. After zero, other things happen. Some of the samples, super cool, go down below zero without freezing, others freeze immediately. 
and that seems, on the whole, sometimes to delay cooling for the cool starters uh, more than for the hot, and that again leads to the same effect. Um, and then, of course, the real question, if you're making ice cream, is when is it all frozen? And that's a bit of another story, again, the supercooling causing further delays.